Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 Q&A with Tim Willits. We will have a game that exceeds expectations. Okay. At Gamescom 2024, I had the amazing opportunity to speak with veteran developer Tim Willits about Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 from Saber Interactive. and the industry as a whole, Willits worked at ID Software for 24 years, eventually becoming the studio director. He then left Texan developer in 2019 and became chief creative officer at Saber Interactive only about a month later. Of course, the main focus of our chat of, was the impending launch of 40k Space Marine 2 on September 9th with a full year of post-launch roadmap update already revealed. I thought this was such a W, by the way. The, apparently the season pass is like you buy the season pass and you just get it like it's not like it goes away you own the season pass it's there apparently forever that's what um chapter master valrak was saying so that was crazy uh neo volkite pistol will round the pistols out in the game and you have to remember that season two is in october it's like season one is a pre-season season two is october right so Whenever season three and four come out, it is what it is. But horde mode should be pushed up to season two. I'm going to cry. Hey, they call me to cry diver king. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cry about this. I want this to be in the game early. This is this is like the horde mode for PVE people. It's the best thing for like couch co-op players. It's the best thing for casual players. And more importantly, horde mode is the best possible thing for your diehard super fans that just want to sit there and grind for 20 or 30 hours right like i i want to sit there and and just get the best gear and go as high and far as possible i want horde mode in the game in season two i hope they could push it forward because this is the most important game mode for the longevity of the game in my opinion it's a season pass not a battle pass yes it, that's true it's a season pass not a battle pass right so that's a completely different thing. And the nice thing is all the content on top is free. All the stuff on the bottom is uh, in the Cosmo is just cosmetic, right? So I think that that's super awesome. No no L's there. Farming W's. Just Horde Mode drops is going to be a binge fest. Everyone will love it. That's why that's why Horde Mode, yeah, it's going to be a binge fiesta, bro. Everybody's, everybody's best memories, like whenever I ask somebody about Gears of War 2 or Gears of War, they remember the Horde Mode because they played that with their friends all night, all day. And guess what? That's what I want to do too. I want that. I want those memories back. And you know what? Them leaving that for a longer amount of time is bad for the game's long-term health. Them having that sooner is the perfect thing for everybody. It, it hits every market for PVE, be casual or hardcore in-game player. So with Space Marine 2, you're taking a beloved game and finally making a sequel around it a decade later. Are you feeling the pressure of the fans? I love this game on my Xbox 360 by the way i played this so much i like i love the pvp on it it was it was amazing i it, it was unbalanced stupid fun it was ridiculous so yes the warhammer 40k franchise has been around for 45 years now and millions of people love the franchise itself the first game was very popular but i also want to say that if you as a fan or as an action gamer have never played the first game don't worry about that you can start with space marine 2 and it's a complete game it's actually difficult to play the first game now because it's only on steam well, I have a hard copy, but it is what it is. I think it's good that they made it this way, and I hope that the first cutscenes, the first things kind of introduce you to Captain Titus and what he is, but I also know that Luton 9 has like an entire lore dump about Captain Titus, so that's a one-hour video, but if you needed to catch up, you could, but you don't really need to understand a lot about it to really uh, know what's going on. There's an expectation for Warhammer 40k fans that we treat the universe with respect and that we get things correct. Please don't make another bad Thunderhammer. Like, Dark Tide, just brutal. But anyways... The, then there's an expectation from fans of the first game, and the first game was amazing. So as well as just fans of Saber and action games, so yes, the expectations are very high, but I believe we have a game that will exceed those expectations. Right? That's a bit. Those are big words, bro. Oh, now he's Lieutenant Titus. Yo, spoilers in chat, bro. Come on. <laughs> we have a very dense game with a campaign mode that you can play yourself or with two friends, which I think is super awesome. We have our PvE missions where the story kind of runs parallel to the campaign. And then we have a full 6v6 PvP mode with three game modes. That's also super cool, by the way. I think PvP is going to be the longevity for me personally. Uh, but like I like the first game because of PvP. So. so it has a lot to offer, and it's all wrapped together in our Saber proprietary technology with the Swarm Tech and AI director. So we believe that we are delivering the true ultimate space marine experience. Um, I was talking to E.T., who has played on the most recent patch because he was playing it at a uh, fan expo. And he said that, like, the, the Swarm director is amazing and actively adapts to what you're doing now, right? So if you're so good, if to, like, it's still zerging you with tons of enemies, 
but apparently they've done really a really 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 good job with it since uh with the for the live version of the game more adaptive more just better at dealing with you but you're also like getting worn down by you know thousands of enemies like you should be how long did it take to get make the game games always take a long time nowadays about four years or so in this case but we're very proud of where it is now we're very happy with our work and the people who played the preview were happy pre-orders are great right now and what we're focused on is september 9th you know making sure that the servers are up and running for everyone they probably won't be because they didn't do a beta test but it is what it is um making sure that any issues are ironed up but everything's looking good it's all green lights the game is fun and solid so yeah i'm excited about the launch so good for him he's hyped for the launch he thinks his servers can handle the slam i don't think so it's the most pre-ordered game on Steam right now. But yeah, they made this game in four years, and you got to think, they made this game in eight years, and it cost $100 million and lasted for seven days. Oh, excuse me, this cost... Uh, I'm pretty sure this cost, yeah, $200 million for Concord. But uh, they made Space Marine 2 in half the amount of time with a fraction of the money. I think that we call that talented. Anyways... I believe, if you know, you know. I believe the game was originally meant to come out in late 2023. Can you share what were the reasons behind this nine-month delay and what you did to improve during this additional time? We just needed more time to polish it. You know what they say, an old game... Uh, you know that old saying that a game is only late until it ships, but a bad game is bad forever. We wanted to focus on making sure that every component, the single-player campaign, and the PvE co-op mode... All those things were solid. Okay, that's good. There's a lot of things in this game. I feel players, I feel that players will feel good regarding value and content. When you have all those systems, you have progression and you have multiplayer. Sometimes things take longer to get right, but I'm glad we took the time. We need to make sure that we got it correct because Warhammer 40k fans want it correct. If we screwed something up, they would be mad, you know? And so we really wanted to honor the franchise. We wanted to respect the universe and we wanted to make the game that people want to play. Bro, this guy's this guy's gassing me up right now, bro. This is the oh my he's oh my god, the, he's gassing me up, bro. The creative office is gassing us up. The game that people want to play, bro. It's not the game the devs want to play. It's the game that people want to play, bro. Oh my god, imagine people who like video games working on a video game. I'm edgy. <laughs> after after that triple Z trailer, I can't help it, bro. All right, <laughs> will it be realistic? I hope that I hope that <laughs> I hope that it just makes sense. Okay. If it's realistic, then uh, I hope it's realistic for a space marine. You worked closely with Games Workshop, right? Yes, they were a great partner. Everything had to be approved from small insignia to iconography, dialogue, etc. But they were great to work with and helped us every step of the way. So it was a real partnership. I guess that includes the storyline. Definitively, our storyline with Titus. Did you play the original? Not much. Okay, which is fine because, again, like you said, you don't have to play the first one. I know Titus, the protagonist, was demoted at the end of the first game. Yes, and then he spent 200 years in the Death Watch. Death Watch are like super Xenos hunters, right? Makes sense. This is the fresh start for him, but we tried to add more personality and emotions to his story and his relationship with his squad mates and how they feel about him. He needs to win their trust while also saving the universe so it's more than just a run-and-gun game. Titus' story is an important part of the experience. I can't wait to play it, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. Not realistic, not fun. Am I right, fellas? Fellas? <laughs> let's, let's not talk about that, Vinny. This is a super plasma gun, all right? Get over it, buddy. I'm going to be blasting you with it if you don't watch your mouth, all right, bud? Anyways, especially because nowadays gamers want more. They're not just fine with shooting like in the original days of Doom. Uh, I think that this is a misconception. I think that when you look at some of the most popular games like Counter-Strike or like halo 2 like way back in the day and whatever people do just want to shoot and have fun in pvp like that's why call of duty is like dying literally is people just want to play the old cod people just want to go back to those days people want to play unreal tournament like they want mindless violence bro like that's what we want actually <laughs> that's what i mean like we, <laughs> yeah, we want that that's crazy to say so Yes, it's important to note that Warhammer 40k Universe has been an inspiration for so many video games throughout the last decades. Just look at the original Doom Space Marine. What does he look like? Like, look at the chainsword and gears. Where did that come from? Well, I mean, it's 
it's a Lancer, right? But it is what it is. Uh, look at things like the power armor and fallout that looks a lot like space Marine. This IP has influenced so many games. So I hope, uh, gamers maybe younger or may not understand 40 K universe can look at this, and understand how effective it is. Uh, I would say that you could look at most of the weapons in this game, just from some of the previews and be like, yeah, the giant glowing sword probably owns the glowing hammer owns the glowing mega fist owns, right? The giant cannon busts, right? It makes sense. Speaking of the storyline, something I noticed while playing the previews that one of Titus's squad mates is very confrontational with him. Oh, spoilers. Come on. Guess Gadriel and Chiron. Uh, yes, he gets a little whiny and I want to punch him. But yes, he's like, what is up with you? There's an event in the game between Titus and him, but it's interesting to see how that plays out. Good job, buddy. They get... <laughs> Question asker L, bro. Question asker L. Based on your estimates, how long is the campaign going to be? It took me 12 hours to complete it, but it all depends on how you play it on the difficulty, whether you're with your human buddies or by yourself ETC. Um, so game director playing the game 12 hours, normal difficulty, probably take us like six hours to beat the campaign, watching all the cinematics, maybe seven. Uh, and then on hard mode, we'll see later. But I want to just enjoy the campaign and vibe. I, I don't really care about, you know, beating a campaign on hard. I don't know who's trying to flex with that, but it is what it is. I would love to do oil power fists. I'd love to be clay fistiest, bro. Time to get dinner? Yes, sir. No death hardest difficulty? Yeah, I mean, it'll happen, but yeah. Game journal. Well, this is the creative director or whatever, what right? creative, creative officer or whatever, saying that it took him 12 hours. So like, you got to think like the guy who made the game is probably sitting there. He sees the thing that he loves that he's like, oh, I needed that in that part of the campaign. And he goes and inspects it for 10 minutes and he walks around it and looks at it because he loves the game that he worked on. Right. You can tell by the way he's talking about it. So it's like, you can kind of understand that it's going to take that guy 12 hours to complete the game because he's going to spend 20 extra minutes in each small area. <laughs> Brother Fistus, give them the fist. What do you think about starting with a bulwark? I'm going to be assault Marine bow all day. That's why I played in the first game. We're going, I'm going assault first and either heavy or tactical second. Uh, we have more plans to add classes to the multiplayer modes after launch. Well, that's in small titles. What do you mean? Oh, there we go. Okay, there's more down here. Okay, yeah, but I was going to say, this is a pretty important part of the interview, bro. Like, why is that so small? We have a, we're gonna, they're going to add more classes to multiplayer modes after launch? What kind of more classes you guys think it's going to be? Librarian, tech marine, right off the rip. Imagine a librarian with a force axe. Oh, bro. I'd be cooked. That's all I'd want to play. Me and TV would be fighting for Librarian. First one to click in. Librarian is a Space Marine Psyker. Yeah, I figured. All right. I'm not a super knowledgeable Space Marine guy. Okay. I'm a super knowledgeable Imperial Guard guy. Dabizard's been trying to teach me Space Marines on the side. So I'm an Imperial Guardsman at heart. <laughs> a domain expansion with turrets. Ooh, yeah. Chaplain. What's a chaplain do? A chaplain. Commissar Marine is a chaplain. That's lit. Which pal is more like the Ogren? So a chaplain's like a commissar marine? That's dope, bro. That's actually cool. Yeah, so so basically librarian, tech marine, and chaplain. So we got a couple of them that would be cool. I hope we can get in Dreadnought armor too at some point, just like for something like a fun, you know, side thing. But yeah, that's, that's sick. Okay, so hopefully there's going to be some more cool classes. And the weapons, they, they can go crazy with, right? Like uh, they, they're adding the... Uh, oops, the Neo Volkite pistol. Oh, so this is a super laser. Laser. Oh, these. So these are laser beams. Damn, that's cool. This is gonna. You know what's crazy is a couple of the. This is gonna round the pistols out hopefully because the pistol. There's a little bit of a pistol problem in this game. Sorry for the spoilers. Uh, but so these are Space Marine last guns. Is that what they are? That's sick. Okay, so I'm going to be using this all the time as an Imperial Guardsman uh, Stan. That's cool. So the PvE co-op missions uh, basically continues the story of the campaign, right? So as you play through the campaign, there are times when the other Space Marine squads go off and do other important missions in the big storyline. So it's like there's one mission where you have to send a signal and the defenses have to be knocked out and you hear that there's a squad doing that. Well, when you play PvE Ops, you're that squad. The battle is so big, there's so much going on that we've engineered these co-op missions to fit into the story and make you feel like more of a conflict. Wait, that's so cool. So as you beat the campaign, 
you'll get to like a, a, a an area and then you'll you when you go do the op that'll be that op that's kind of cool i like that it helps bring the world to life has hd2 drama true uh i know you have class system for multiplayer modes can we talk about that indeed are you familiar with world war z it's a little similar our game director dimitri whatever was the game director on world war z and he's very good at progression by the way i can confirm w game direct uh, the ai director for this game is nuts class identities and attributes as you play even in pve as you progress you unlock different classes and earn experience you can use some of that experience to upgrade your character even in pvp so it's like world war z where you have things like the assault class the heavy class and the support class we have warhammer 40k names for them but uh you can pick one that fits your style and then you can apply your experience to those classes i like having progression so that way it's like in pvp like it's cool to i mean i, don't, I know some people say oh you just want an advantage over other people or whatever but it's like it's cool to have your character be more formed to way that you want it, right? It's like everybody's going to have a little bit of a different build. Some people are just going to have like, you know, the IGN build and they'll just get steamrolled and that'll be great. But, you know, uh, by the way, IGN, 7 out of 10, right, is what it is. So, uh, you know, you can either use the IGN build or you can use the real build. And, you know, I think that that's the kind of skill gap that I need. And that's nice. So how deep is the progression for each class? It's deep. World War Z was deep. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I feel that players will be happy. Like World War Z, we have updates where we will expand classes, weapons, and game modes all for free. I love that it's free. So we already went over that, basically. I mean, new stuff for everything? Sounds good to me. Is there some sort of randomness attached to the co-op mode to keep things interesting? Yes, the game knows that you've played those missions before, and if you play them again, you can have different enemies. So you may play a mission, and then all of a sudden, Chaos Marines show up. We do it to add variety to that. It comes back to our AI director, which is a key component of our swarm engine. We have the swarm deck, which controls the actions of the Tyranids, and the swarm breaks, and each Tyranid starts to come at you. Then the AI director kicks in, and it understands the states of the battles. It can bring heavies in. It can bring in range attack Tyranids. As a, sp uh, as a space marine, you are the ultimate killing machine. You are plowing through these Tyranids, but at some point, you start to feel overwhelmed, and you're fighting and fighting, and you just finally make it through with barely enough armor left to survive, but you've done it, and that's all due to this very advanced AI director that helps kind of orchestrate these battles. I mean, at least they get it. Like, I want to kill hundreds, thousands of enemies. You know, I want to, I just want to, I just want to eventually be worn down. You know what I mean? And sure, I want those big battles with those, you know, four big guys, but I want to, I want to be slowly bled down. He got to run from hordes for realism. Yeah, I totally want to run away the entire game. I never run away. I always fight to the death. I just never die. Always. Except for the times that I die, but we just cut those out of the video. So never die. Are the class skills in multiplayer the same across PvE and PvP? Oh, don't worry. Four big guys, or excuse me, three big guys is making a return. But the collaboration event that you guys didn't know is ever going to exist was six big guys coming to PvP near you. Our shoulder plate's going to say DDGB, and if you know, you know. And if you don't know, you're going to get gaped by it. Are the class skills and multiplayers the same as PvE and PvP, or did you balance them differently? There are similarities, but there's also differences because obviously fighting Chaos Marines is much more difficult than fighting Tyranids. There are behind-the-scenes changes and adjustments that allow for uh, challenging yet approachable gameplay in PvP, as well as having fun with your buddies in PvE. When you're in PvE, it's okay to feel overpowered, but in PvP, not so much. I'm gonna cry, bro. It's been three years. Dork tied with Fat Shark just being like, oh, everything has to be balanced in Warhammer. Whoa. <laughs> Helldivers, <laughs> we're gonna make the flamethrower so realistic. I can't shoot through a chain like fence. We're good. Had to shake it out. Yeah, what's great about PvP is something I call the dance of death where you can't just button mash. You gotta move. You have your blocks, you have your grabs, you have your counters, you have your fast melees, you have your long melees, and then you have weapons. You need to keep moving, attacking, block, attack. So there's a dance of death that we have created in PvP. 
It's going to be like Sekiro where I'm just fucking W key, block, parry, kill, everything. Yeah, bro. <sighs> what do I really have to say about this is um, if they follow through on that, awesome. It depends how hard they overbalance. P if they don't, I don't want them to overbalance PVP. The reason Space Marine One was fun was because some things were OP. Like if somebody landed on your head with a thunder hammer and you died, that was because they landed on your head with a thunder hammer and you died. Like that's okay. It's a thunder hammer. If somebody claps your cheeks with a thunder hammer or power fists you, like you're dead, bro. Get over it. Right. That's it. Is what it is. Right. So. Hopefully it's not too overbalanced, but the fact that they're just like, it's okay to be OP in PvE, we're just going to swarm you to death anyways, so you need to be OP, is is the summary, and, and that's so important, and all these other stupid-ass garbage studios just have no idea how to make a game. They get it on Space Marine 2, they don't get it on Dark Tide, they don't, and again, people are talking about the Dark Tide update going to be so lit for, for the crafting update, well... Last time I played, we had what would you play melee maelstrom? That's a great experience on Dark Tide. There's tons of enemies, there's shit everywhere. It's so fun. It's a swarm, but they artificially limit your ammo for no reason to make it more like it's stupid, right? And then there's also a, a delay on because there's too many enemies. The game engine, like the game, can only handle so many guys. I want there to be that many guys in every mission. The melee maelstrom is like the good example, but like we need more zombies, bro. Like. And then in Helldivers, we just need more shitty enemies. It just, it's so sad to see these games take themselves so serious. And then they're just like, and then you have the opposite end where it's like, yeah, you're just going to be an OP space when you're going to run around big dick and everything. Have fun. Thank God. So uh, Saber Interactive, nothing really changed since we returned independent. The great thing about Saber is there's me, Matt, uh, Andrew, and Anton. I don't know. Uh, there's four of us that make decisions. That was always the case. We've announced some other games working on like Jurassic Park Survival, A Quiet Place. This looked pretty good. A Quiet Place, The Road Ahead. This looked like a fun horror game that we, if it's out by Halloween, we might play it. We'll see. Oh, it's coming out in October. Okay, so yeah, we just keep reading. We might play that for Halloween, guys, because we always play horror games on Halloween and get... Last year, we played some crazy-ass Taiwanese horror game. Oh my god, bro, I was screaming. It was so scary. And Toxic Commando. We'll be uh, talking about that soon after Space Marine 2 launch. Things are going well for us. Okay, good for them. Recently, the industry was shaken by various elements uh, like studio closures and mass layoffs. Some developers are quite pessimistic about the future. What do you think? Well, you don't have to be very pessimistic if you just make a good game. Anyways, I remember that, uh, yes, there's always cycles, but good games and good teams will always be successful. I just had to keep reading. One of the things that Saber has done well is that we've <laughs> we have studios around the world and we focus on the right scopes for our games. We focus on the right deal for our games. Each studio has multiple projects, so we don't have 200 employees sitting around waiting for pre-production to finish. We're very smart with our money and we focus on the core aspects of the game. Focus on what's truly fun. Whether it's a $5 million game, a $10 million, or a 50, it doesn't matter. But if the core game loop is not there, it's not going to be a success. And we've done well by managing our teams, having teams around the world at different cost structures, and finding the most talented people. If you're a world-class artist, you don't need to be in Cali. Thank God, bro. Because the Cali devs are in that crazy bubble of garbage games. Uh, yeah, that was one of the that was one of the hardest hitting responses we've had in a while. I should play Dark Wood. I don't know if I want to get the Dark Wood Green Leaf, but you know what? I'll think about it, bro. It's not the Dark Wood's usually for Wednesdays, brother. You know what I'm saying? What's with these base devs? These guys in Forever Winter, back to back. These guys in Forever Winter have said everything we've wanted to hear because they've just watched uh, Hell Divers two completely gaslight and ruin their game. They're not over delivering with these crazy promises. They're just saying, here's our product. It's going to deliver. That's it. Money where your mouth is. And uh, e either it is what it is or it isn't. So W's up for uh, whatever this was, because that they farmed me. I'm a glazer now. I'm, in a gl I'm a glizzy gobbler because of this statement. Glug, glug. I guess, like you said, perhaps the Seeker is really managing your budget really well because some game franchises have their budgets balloon with certain sequels. I, I mean, it 
sure. Just have people who want to make good video games and uh, you'll make a good game. FromSoft is the definitive shining example of that. Well, that's because some teams, especially in North America, 150 to 200 people, they pay everyone well. If your burn rate is a couple million dollars a month and you want to change an idea three months later, it's like a $6 million wasted. We can make a game for $6 million. Damn. That's one of the problems you get. It's like, we ain't paying nobody, bro. <laughs> That's one of our problems. You get these huge teams working on one game. If they want to irate, that's expensive. Each studio at Saber has a main team working on something and it's a natural ramp. And we have people experimenting with ideas that are starting some really small projects. Maybe five people want to work on an idea. They can change it. They irate. They're not spending millions of dollars. As soon as that idea is solid and we're happy with it, after going through our evaluation and our gates, we ship people over to that project. We also have a culture at Saber where everyone can work on every project. I've seen studios in North America where people are like, I'm on the red team. I'm not going to work on the blue team because we're, uh, but here we're all team Saber. For instance, we are ramping people off of Space Marine 2 because it's coming out soon. I don't like that because, dude, I don't like that. Now, those people work on Jurassic Park Survival or Toxic Commando. Like, bro, just, just, just hit Space Marine. Just, just stop it. Let's not do that. That sounds crazy. I don't like that. That's an L. That's how we remain lean and make money. We don't have ridiculously expensive budgets, so we don't have to sell 4 million copies to be a success. But you know what I'm, I'm saying? I just imagined Butters in South Park. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there are games in North America that if they don't sell 4 to 6 million copies, they're a failure, and that is dangerous. Agree. Just one last question. EA actually came out a few months ago saying investors call after canceling Star a Star Wars game in development at Respawn to say that they would lean less on licensed franchises in the future. Do you think that's where the industry is headed, partially to offset those growing budgets? Oh, no, no. We're working on a Jurassic Park game. That's one of the world's biggest IPs. Technically true, by the way. And we have other things that we're working on that we haven't announced yet. Now, you have to manage how much money you're spending on your team. You have to manage how your teams are working. <sighs> Bro. This guy is saying things that you would think should, shouldn't matter, right? This guy's literally saying things that you would think, oh, that doesn't make sense. Why would you say that? We learned that Helldivers 2 has zero management. They don't manage a single one of their workers. Nothing gets done. This is, and then we learn with Concord. We learn with all these other games that are coming out. They don't manage their workers correctly. They don't do what they're supposed to. And then guess what? You end up with a shitty game, right? He's cooking. An actual manager. Because you know what happens if I go to work and... I don't do what my manager tells me. Well, I'm not going to work anymore. Surprise, surprise. Shouldn't that be how all jobs are? You shouldn't be getting depressed when you go on like a six month vacation, come back to work. We didn't work at all, but the game's not working good. Guess I'll be sad and not have good work ethic. No, you should have good work ethic ethic all the time because you should be good at your job. And if you suck at your job, then it's somebody's job to tell you what to do. And just here's your 10 tasks for the day. You didn't finish your 10 tasks? Why? Oh, wait, it was too much work for you? Did you ask anybody on your team for help? Is this actually a huge problem that we thought was a small problem? Communicate that so that we can fix it. Nobody's communicating at these places, dude. So this is good. Congrats, you got promoted to unemployed. Yeah, it's crazy. If you have the right brand, the right IP, it can really benefit you. Even we had a great success working with other IPs. Look at World War Z. I believe the game has made more money than the movie did. I'm also not sure about that. You have to manage your teams and your business, and you have to make the right game with the right budget in the right part of the world. That's what we do well. Okay, thanks for your time. Uh, this guy just like gassed us up to the point where like I don't even really know what to say. Uh, I hadn't read this before, but somebody had linked it to me, and like this is crazy. And the thing is, it's really sad that this is where we're at with gaming where like what he's saying is like like the gospel or whatever right like not literally but you know what i mean it's the emperor's holy words space marine why is why is managing your team a w bro like i guess but like oh my god this was a 10 out of 10 yeah this was a 10 out of 10 talking about the game they did a really good job talking about the game here i think that this is a w yeah i'm glazed up i'm a i'm a glizzy as it stands right this second i'm a glizzy gladiator for every single thing except for when he said that they're moving people off of space marine 2 because they do have this roadmap and i do want like i don't how many missions are we getting because it's only a month away right like see this is only one month this isn't a long time what are we getting 
we want the horde mode because this the horde mode is the most important thing they could add to the game. They need to not rotate people. I know that they want to release other games, but they need they can delay those games. This needs to come out sooner than later so that more people are more happy. Apparently, this season's supposed to be in January when we were looking at that other timeline thing. So if this was moved to January and everybody was working on it, I'd be I'd be way more impressed with that because that is super important in my opinion. The only thing right now we can hope for is that the that you know Kim Willits stands by his word. 